All right, we're going to solve some trig equations that involve um, unit circle angles. So this is a little easier. Uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, it's kind of easier than when they don't involve unit circle angles, but maybe not. Um, so the first thing we have is sine of x equals 1 half. So uh, I see that. I see uh, sine, and I see positive 1 half. So I think to myself that could be quadrant 1 or 2. Um, in quadrant 1, uh, I know that the angle that has a sine of 1 half in quadrant 1 is pi over 6. So x would be pi over 6, but you never want to forget we're looking for all values of x, so that's plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of the integers, so we're going to write that a ton. Um, and then in quadrant 2, the angle that has a sine of 1 half is 5 pi over 6. And then again, we don't want to forget that it could be uh, any uh, coterminal angle to that. So uh, now let's make it a little more complicated, so we're going to change the problem and make it solve sine of uh, x plus pi over 4 is equal to 1 half. One half. Um, so again, you see sine and positive 1 half, so you know you're in quadrants 1 and 2. Um, but what I'm going to do is I think of this thing here as uh, something in a box. So uh, to solve this, whatever is in the box, so quadrant 1, whatever's in the box, so x plus pi over 4, can be that angle from quadrant 1. So it could be pi over 6, um, and then all the angles that wrap around. So what I want to do is solve for x. So I'm going to subtract pi over 4 from both sides, but the only thing it combines with is the pi over 6. So um, I get pi over 6 minus pi over 4, so that's 2 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12, so negative pi over 12. And then it's still plus 2 pi n, uh, because I had nothing to combine with that. And then we have quadrant 2, so whatever's in the box, which is x plus pi over 4, could be that angle from quadrant 2, so it could be 5 pi over 6, and then plus 2 pi n. And then 5 pi over 6 is 10 pi over 6, uh, 10 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12. So I get 7 pi over 12, and then plus 2 pi n, where n is an element of the integers. All right, so not really a big deal. Um, it does come down to knowing your unit circle angles. So hopefully you know that by now. Uh, it's hard to imagine being in my class and not knowing it. So here we'll do another one, cosine, and it's negative. So that can be quadrants 2 and 3. So in quadrant 2... I need to think of the angle that has a cosine of negative radical 2 over 2. Well, that's going to be a pi over 4 type of angle, so 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. In quadrant 3, it's again a pi over 4 type of angle, but in quadrant 3, so that's going to be 5 pi over 4, and then again plus 2 pi n. So let's make this one a little more challenging. So we'll solve cosine of 3x plus pi over 2 equals negative radical 2 over 2. So same idea here. Um, it can come from quadrants 2 and 3. So in quadrant 2, um, I have the thing in the box, so 3x plus pi over 2 equals uh, 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. But now I need to solve for x. So the first thing I do is I subtract uh, pi over 2 from both sides. So 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 2 is just going to be pi over 4. So I have 3x equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Now I'm going to divide everything I see by 3. So uh, pi over 4 divided by 3 is pi over 12. And then 2 pi n divided by 3 is just uh, 2 pi n over 3, where n is an element of the integer. So that's a little different. Uh, so multiplication or division is going to be applied to everything. It's kind of an order of operations, combining like terms type of deal. Um, so let's do the quadrant 3 angle. So um, we get x plus pi over 2 equals 5 pi over 4. So again, it all comes down to knowing your unit circle. Um, and then plus 2 pi n. So we're going to subtract the pi over 2, and it's going to combine with the 5 pi over 4. So we get 3x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. And then our next step is divide er divide everything we see by 3. So we end up with x equals pi over 4 plus 2 pi n over 3, where n is an element of the integers. All right, so that's how we do that. Um, I'm going to do one more example. Um, and this one will be to solve cotangent of x over 5 minus pi over 3, and then that equals negative radical 3 over 3. So same kind of idea. I see cotangent, and it's negative. So that could come from quadrants 2 or 4. But now what I want to remember is uh, the period, actually, of cotangent is just pi by itself. So I'm only actually going to need one equation for this because uh, the original angles that I think of uh, they're just going to bounce from quadrant 2 to 4 to 2 to 4. So we really only need one thing. So let's say x over 5 minus pi over 3 is equal to. So 
I need an angle whose cotan the, a type of angle whose cotangent is radical three over three. Um, and that's going to be a pi over 3 type of angle, but I need it in quadrant 2, so 2 pi over 3. So again, knowing the unit circle, knowing your tangents, cotangents, kind of important here. Um, and then the period in this case is just plus pi n, where n is an element of the integers. So same sort of thing, I'm going to add um, pi over 3 to both sides, to end up with uh, pi plus pi n, where n is an element of the integers, multiply through by 5, so I get x equals 5 pi plus 5. 5 pi n, where n is an element of the integers. Um, but you might notice it's you know 5 pi plus 5 pi n. Uh, we don't really need the initial 5 pi, because um, we could just say that x is 5 pi n, and then if n is equal to 1, we would get 5 pi, so it works. Um, and this idea works uh, similarly for tangent. So a tangent problem would have the same exact notion involved. Anyway, those are a few examples. Um, I hope you know all your unit circle angles, and I hope uh, this was helpful. Good luck.